Um, so without further ado, Nick Christian. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Mr. Parr, sorry. Um, listen, I, um, I want to start off by obviously thanking Mr. Parr for the opportunity. Um, the truth is, I am honored to speak to all of you, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> I don't say that just to establish protocol, but, you know, much of who I am as a man um, and much of who I'm becoming has a lot to do with, you know, my experiences in the Ben Salem community, um, the culture, and the tradition. So I truly am honored. The, 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 the climate, the climate um, in America right now is as what you've all seen. It is, um, you know, rife with rioting and looting, as well as, you know, protesting um, the senseless deaths of, of black bodies. And no one condones the rioting and looting. But as a black man in America, to focus on the rioting and looting is to focus on the symptom and not the disease. For a long time, this disease of racism has found a way to evade and elude every vaccine we have tried to give, give to it, um, every effort we have tried to heal and deliver this nation from it. And so before I get into any speech, I challenge you all to use your voice in spaces that people that look like me may not be invited in um, to speak up and to condemn the, you know, racism that has permeated this, this nation um, for quite frankly, hundreds of years. And um, I think America will be better because of it. And I certainly know that my people will be as well, our people. I wanna start our speech concerning sports um, by um, leveraging, I'm gonna go sideways here, sorry. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to work this thing, sorry. There we go. Um, by leveraging an experience that I had about 15, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I was a freshman in high school, right? I was a freshman on the uh, football team and we were in our fifth week of the season. We were poised to go undefeated and to have a perfect season, to be the second team back to back to have a perfect season. When something would happen, right? Um, on a Monday afternoon, during a practice two days before our game, our star quarterback, his name was Lee Richland, my friend and teammate who played the most important position in football. Um, he, he shattered his hip and also shattered what felt like a perfect season for us. Injuries happened in sports, but this wasn't just any injury, right? This was something that would shake our team to its core. Something that would make us consider whether the work, the rest of our season was worth it. Whether going the extra mile or outworking the Pensberries, Central Bucks or Council Rock teams were still worth it. This was something that would put the magnitude of what it meant to put on a Ben Salem jersey on the back burner of our minds because it was something different than we were used to. It was adversity like we as 16 year olds had never seen. It was an obstacle that we as athletes had yet to concur, to face. It was an obstacle, an obstacle that gave us an excuse to be mediocre, to forget about our aspirations for a perfect season, to forget about the work necessary to be perfect. The next day, everyone showed up to practice and our freshman football coach Alexander Houston. He opened his mouth. Um, we were walking up the hill and he yelled as he always did. He said, let's go, let's go, let's move expeditiously. We were sitting in front of him. All of us were pretty, pretty dismayed. We were discouraged because 
our quarterback, right? The most important position in football, he was injured. He had shattered his hip. Not only was he never going to play football again, but there was talks that he might never walk again, may, may never walk without a limp again, that he couldn't play any sports. But also the hopes of our perfect season seemed gone. We were questioning whether or not the work that was necessary to be perfect was worth putting in. We were questioning whether or not we should continue with the individual skill work, continue with the team meetings, the, the film. We were questioning everything that was a social norm for fighting for victory on any team. And that day, Alexander Houston, he opened his mouth and said, excuses are like buttholes. Everybody has one, but they all stink. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, come on. You couldn't think of a different experience, something less vulgar. You're probably saying there had to be something else you could leverage. But think about this. I'm 28 years old. Father, I am a preacher. I work for a Fortune 50 company as a senior auditor. I am a man in America, a black man in America. And at moments of adversity, while we all face this obstacle, this pandemic of COVID-19, a version of the coronavirus, as I speak to you, I call on the words of my freshman coach from 15 years ago when our team was facing adversity. Coaches, that's the power that you have. That is the opportunity that this pandemic has birthed. That is the moment that you're staring at. Your players right now are looking to you for direction, for action. The words that you will say will be words that they will carry with them as they face adversity and obstacles the rest of their life. You possess the power to positively influence their mind when they face the obstacles for the rest of their life and you are equipped to handle this well. You have done it. You have answered the call by having videos and streaming sessions. You have answered the call by doing individual workouts on Zoom meetings. You have answered the call by going above and beyond to check in on your players. But all I'm suggesting is it, it is an opportunity. Players, I recall that moment, not just because of the words he said, but the practice that followed his words was the most intense and hardest working practice that we've ever had. This example is for you too, because every moment I face adversity, I am influenced by that moment. Following Dr. Houston's words, we had the most intense practice. In other words, my response to that, adverse, to that adversity, our team's response to that adversity has followed and influenced me the rest of my life. In other words, how you respond to this pandemic, the work that you do or do not put in will help you or haunt you the rest of your life. You are facing an opportunity. I have found that Adversity is the fertile soil that champions and winners grow in. That resistance and the obstacles of life are the inevitable happening that hold the propensity to shape us or break us. And today, during this pandemic, we find ourselves sitting at the intersection of excuse and opportunity. We find ourselves having to make a decision, having to answer a persistent and urgent question. And the question that we have to ask ourselves as players and as coaches is which one will we choose? Which direction will we go in? Listen, we've got to be honest with ourselves. This pandemic has given us a legitimate excuse for us to fall short in all of the spaces and the places our lives pre-pandemic required our attendance and our exercising of our greatness. If we make the decision today, if you decide to choose the alleys and the avenues of excuse, 
the majority of the world post pandemic will accept it because the majority of the world will choose it too. The majority of the world will make excuses because their gym is closed. The majority of the world will make excuses because their court, their field, or their track is closed. They will question the work that is necessary to be successful. They will question putting in the work, showing up daily, exercising the necessary intestinal fortitude to experience some version of excellence because the pandemic has taken away in-person team practices, in-person conditioning or team skill work. Maybe they'll even quit working hard because their season is threatened. Coach of the year may not be an option. First team, all league, or even their quest for a championship run is in question. The truth is the majority will choose to run down the alley and avenues of excuse and scapegoat. But I want to challenge you to be the minority. I want to challenge you to chase a level of greatness most won't dare to achieve. I want to challenge you to become obsessed with being better than you were yesterday. Listen, I don't want to be insensitive, right, about the authentic emotions tied to, you know, the, prev the prevalence of and, and, and the, the presence and the reality of this pandemic. Listen, I'm not too far removed from being an athlete myself. I am honestly wrestling with the truth of what it would feel like to me if I had my season in question. I get that many of us are dealing with growth and development walls and obstacles that have been built because of no traditional workouts and activities once deemed a norm in today's society. I get that many of us face obstacles that feel, uh, that daily feel like they are too much to overcome. I even get that for many, the thought of not having a season or the chance to accomplish your team or individual goals because of this pandemic feels and frightens like a daily nightmare. I get it. But I also get that those with more walls to climb are usually stronger than those without them. I also understand the words of Dr. Martin Luther King that our ultimate measure is not where we stand in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where we stand at the time of challenge and controversy. I understand the words of Booker T. Washington that success is not measured by the position that we reach in life, as much as it is by the obstacles that we overcome while trying to succeed. That the greatness of our heroes are not just because of how they perform when the lights were on, but because of the giants that they had to face and defeat, the nightmares and the darkness of life that they had to ignore in order to dream, the work that they had to put in despite every scapegoat and excuse life seemingly gifted or graced them not to. That is what greatness is. That is who owls are. Owls are working when everyone else is sleeping. Owls stand firm when everyone else has to turn around. Owls thrive in the darkness. Hear me, we remember Dr. King not just because of his methods and his impact, not, because of, not just because of his nonviolent direct action, we remember Dr. King because he had the audacity to dream when everything around him was a nightmare. We celebrate Jordan not just because of his six reigns, but because he had the toughness, the will, the intestinal fortitude, the unmitigated gall to chase and conquer a championship even when it meant running through a wall built by the bad boy Pistons and anyone else who dared to build one. We witnessed Diana Taurasi's greatness, but she shared she was often overwhelmed and had to overcome her own insecurities. Mia Hamm is the greatest soccer player ever, but she was born with club, club foot. Christian Ronaldo was poor. Tom Brady was overlooked. Don Staley was overlooked as a player and as a coach. All I'm saying is we are facing a pandemic, yes, 
but they're but the great players and coaches use things that have pandemic-like circumstances not as an excuse but as an opportunity the question is which one will we choose that's the question which avenue will we travel down i'm a ben salem owl i've got my shirt on i'm yelling because i bleed ben salem blue Thus, I've got to admit that the question that I've asked, it's rhetorical. It's a rhetorical question because tradition never graduates. It's a rhetorical question because I am certain that the very decision for you to join this call, to join this video, to watch this video is your choice to journey down the avenue and highway of opportunity. Thus, how do we find a way to experience greatness, to achieve our destiny down a road, a pandemic created road that has never been traveled before? I wanna to suggest to you that I don't have all the answers, but I've got some suggestions that I think are practical and I think will help us as we prepare to dominate the Pinsberries, as we prepare to annihilate the Council Rock Norths, the Souths, the Centrals, the Central Buck Souths, the Trumans, the North Penn, whoever decides to stand before us on the track, on the field, on the court, all of them can get it because Ben Salem Owls knows what it means to win. To survive, to be successful, to taste greatness in this season, the first practical recommendation I have is every day we have to show up. Showing up during a pandemic is hard. It's different. Because you see, showing up pre-pandemic simply meant showing up to practice. It simply meant showing up to individual workouts. A whole lot of people were getting by by simply showing up to things that were scheduled by other people, by following the norms and going through the motions. But the truth is this pandemic has stripped every sense of routine and normality for most of us. So showing up during a pandemic is hard and it looks different. Showing up during a pandemic means that we can't just let our day take advantage of us. It means that we have to establish a plan and a schedule. And every day we have to make the conscious decision to show up and dominate that schedule and win the day. It means that I need an ab workout and an accountability partner. It means that I need a push-up workout and accountability partner. It means that I have to schedule that at 12 o'clock every day. I have to do something that will make me better than I was the day before. That I have to be intentional about doing the necessary things to ensure that I am ready, whether the season comes or not. Why? Because the truth is, we are simply training our minds that whenever adversity or turmoil finds itself on our road, that whenever the issues of life arise, we will do what is necessary. We will adapt accordingly to make sure that we evade, that we elude, that we overcome whatever is placed in, in front of us. We have to show up daily. The second thing I want to suggest to you is that we have to sow into ourselves, that we have to find a way to be great. Tim Duncan said, good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. But how do you know what is best? So I wanna to suggest to you that in this season of pandemic, you finding out who is best is gonna require you sowing into yourself. It's gonna require you doing some research of videos of the best coaches to ever do it. Some of their skills and techniques that you can implement even in the season of pandemic and virtual meetings. 
It's going to require you looking at at home workouts that you can do that your coach doesn't assign to you at home skill work and at home body work. It's going to require you to be obsessed with being better than the best in the business. There is no excuse for you not being better after this pandemic. Let me be clear. How you look at this pandemic, the work that you put in during this pandemic as a coach and as a player will determine the fruit that you will harvest after it's over. Hear me. Moses, the greatest emancipator and liberator, is responsible for writing the book of Genesis. In it, I believe it's chapter 8, verses 21. I'll make sure Per gets the right address and sends it to you. Moses records a promise that God gave to Noah after the flood. The promise, in part, I will only give you the first section of it because that is what's most applicable. Moses writes that God told Noah that never again will seed, time, and harvest fail. In other words, never again will planting, will the work that you put in, will the time that it takes for that work to bear its fruit, and will the harvest of that fruit fail, which is to say that regardless of if, if, if it's a pandemic, an epidemic, if it is anything that is adverse to the normalities of life, if you put the work in necessary for you to be ses to successful, there is a promise that the work that you put in will reap its, its fruit. So the question is not whether it's worth it. The question is, are you willing to put in the work in spite of the uncertainty? So when to you, show up. Last but not least, you have to be obsessed with yesterday's version of you. you. You have to be obsessed with beating yesterday's version of you. You have to be obsessed with being better every day. You have to be consumed with beating you. You have to beat yesterday's version of yourself so much that you become hard to beat and then you've got to find a way to beat you. And I promise you, if you become so obsessed with being the best coach that you can be, so obsessed with being the best player you can be, in spite of whatever is in front of you, even if it's uh, the bad boy Detroit Pistons, even if it's a pandemic, even if it's being overlooked, is if you become obsessed, I promise you that when the obstacles of life arise, you will be prepared. It doesn't matter if it's on the court. It doesn't matter if it's in the boardroom. It doesn't matter if it's in the world. It doesn't matter where it is. If you become obsessed with being the best version of you, then you will equip yourself for success. Because in the words of Booker T. Washington, success is not measured by the position that you reach in life as much as it is by the obstacles that you overcome while trying to succeed. Thank you. Hey, listen, uh, before, before, uh, before, before we get into questions, I, I came back over to my desk because I had two things that I wanted to also give. When I talk about sewing into you, um, you know, there's three pillars to that. There's your mind, your body, and also oh, your soul. Obviously, I recommend prayer and, and establish a spiritual relationship. But um, in terms of your mind, which I wrestled a little bit and touched on a little bit, um, I'm a big reader. And so I have two recommendations that I like to give from a book perspective. The first is a book by Joshua Metcalf and Jamie Gilbert. It is um, it's called Burn Your Goals. I think it's a spectacular book in this season um, to journey with, with your players because it really drives in the importance of focusing on the controllables, right? The truth of the matter is we really can't control whether or not we win the game, we win the championship, 
or even if we win things like MVP, those are just the fruit of what comes from our work. The really, the thing that we can focus on and really control is the work that we are intentional about putting in every single day, the process of just beating at our craft at both coach and as player. So this is one of the books that I, I recommend and the other one, I can't show you the book because I have it on my, my, uh, my, Apple, um, my Apple iBooks, but that book is called Relentless. I've recommended it to the men's basketball team when I gave a motivational speech at the beginning of the year. I'm not gonna suggest that that motivational speech had anything to do with their unprecedented uh, success this season. Um, but, but I will say that that book is by Tim S. Grover. Uh, it is a book that talks about the mentality of Michael Jordan, of Dwayne Wade, of guys that were trained by Tim S. Grover. And I think that is also a great book because it talks to the work ethic that is necessary and that is unprecedented and desirable and admirable for all players and persons um, who are competing in any facet of life, not just sports.